What's going on, you guys? This is Tim Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today, me and Sam got a uh, concrete shed slab job. We're going to be uh, taking you along on showing you guys how to do your own concrete shed slab. And I think we picked up about two and a half pallets of concrete, 120 bags. And uh, we ended up hand mixing everything. So it was definitely a tough day, tough job. I think we were here for like about 12 hours, something along the line, something crazy like that. It was a, a long, brutal day, but we got the job done, and that's what matters. And what was funny was there was actually another concrete truck next door pouring out, and, you know, I was kind of hoping that we were going to be able to bring him over so we can just pour out with him so we didn't have to hand mix all these concrete bags. But, uh, you know, we ended up hand mixing it, going old school, and just getting the job done. And there's all the concrete we actually brought up. And uh, me and Sam were having a little bit of fun with this. We decided to make a little challenge out of this, make this uh, go a little bit quicker. We decided to see who could bring up the most concrete bags at a time. I think I did like 13, Sam did something like 12. So he almost got me, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think I uh, got one up on him. So, uh, but if you think about that guys, 12 to 13 bags, uh, 60 pounds each, that's a lot of weight. You know, I think it's somewhere around the 700 range. And uh, you can see we just started the, the dig on the concrete shed slab. I started digging out the two sides to get two of my form boards in to make a little bit of a 90 so that I can see exactly how much I'm going to have to dig down in total for this yard since it was a little wavy. And we do end up using the 345 method. We actually, well actually it was a 6810 method because this shed slab was about 12 by 12. Yeah, it was a 12 by 12 shed slab. So I ended up using the 6810 method, which is an even more accurate method to square your um, concrete shed slab. And uh, the, the way you're able to do that, to do the 6810, is once you get your boards butted up to each other at a 90, well, you don't have the 90 yet, but once you butt them up next to each other and get a general uh, 90 degrees going you measure one way six feet and the other way eight feet put nails and once you measure from the six foot nail and the eight foot nail and you're trying to make a triangle pretty much you see if you get 10 feet and once you get 10 feet you know you have a perfect 90 and that's called the Pythagorean theorem if you guys didn't know that and there's plenty of videos you can look up to get more in depth on that but that's pretty much how you get a, a 90 when you don't have a carpenter square or something to help you along the lines like that. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just measuring off the back of that wall pretty much to make sure that my form bar is perfectly straight with it because I want to start with something straight and I know that wall was straight. And you can see me and Sam actually started off with a 345 method. To see how uh, straight we were or, or how uh, much of a 90 or square we were with the 345 method and we ended up we do end up start, uh, using a 6810 method and I actually picked up a guy from Home Depot to help me mix all this concrete because uh, I knew that me and Sam just doing this we'd be here till the next day if we didn't pick up another guy to help us mix everything so uh, I ended up picking up this random guy he was actually super cool and super helpful um, he actually ended up building a tool for us, a small little rake, because I didn't bring our rake with us at the time. So he ended up building one for us out of wood and nails. And I thought that was pretty cool. And you guys will see that in the video uh, coming up. I, I show how to, I, I should pretty much show how he built it and how useful it actually was. So you can see we're just pretty much picking everything and just hand picking up all the grass because the dirt's fine. We, and you can see, I think we were roughly about four or five inches deep in total on this concrete pour, or this concrete shed slab. Our guy was getting tired of picking up all the grass with his hands, so he started uh, making that rake. So here's kind of how he did it. He put uh, the skill saw on a 45, 45 degree angle, cut a notch out of the 2x4. And once he cut that notch out, he was able to place a handle on the back of it pretty much. 
Now he's going to make two more cuts so that that notch can come out. And he's going to be placing the handle just like that. How he's kind of demonstrating. You can see in the background I'm just kind of putting stakes in. Setting up the shed slab. So there is a lot of work that goes into projects like these. It's a, it's very labor intensive, especially when you hand mix everything. So I, I recommend ordering a concrete truck, guys. Anything over two pallets, order a concrete truck. Even one pallet. I think mixing one pallet's fine, but more than that, order a concrete truck. Save your back. So you can see he's putting some uh, nails in the back of the handle to keep it there on uh, the, the rake, the head of the rake. And then what he's going to do on the other side is he's going to be placing the nails through, going in through the opposite way. He doesn't want the nails facing the ground. He wants the head of the nails facing the ground because they are better at picking up and grabbing anything like weeds and moving the dirt into uh, more level areas. So this guy was pretty handy. It's uh, always kind of hard to find some good help from Home Depot, but uh, I would say this guy was definitely uh, good help. And um, I mean, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. I know my dad's gotten unlucky a couple of well, more than a couple of times, but uh, he told me some pretty funny, crazy stories from picking up guys at Home Depot. And uh, I don't know if you guys have some funny, crazy stories of like the worst, like maybe workers you guys have picked up in Home Depot. Let me know because that that'd be funny to hear about. So you guys let me know if you want to hear about some of the stories my dad has went through when getting workers at Home Depot. Also, guys, let me know how you guys find your workers because it's always hard to find good workers or good help. But uh, here it is, guys. Here's the rake in action. It actually is uh, working pretty nicely. And I actually still have the rake, and I do use it sometimes. But I ended up, you know, buying a nice rake and using that because the rake head was only about two feet in length. And uh, it's nicer to have something that's longer and that can grade more at once. But this came in handy for the day. Definitely useful. You see it's picking up all those uh, grass blades. Now here's me and Sam uh, using the 6810 method to make sure we were square all along the perimeter. Or just on the slab in general. We're checking the length, front, uh, the length and the width making sure we got a perfect 12 by 12. And we're also putting the six foot Milwaukee level on these form boards making sure we have a slight slope from the back of the wall to the front because we want the water to run off this sh uh, this concrete slab. We don't want the conc or the water puddling on this shed. It's gonna be they're gonna be putting a tough shed on top of this. And uh, here I am also using the the little tamper to tamp the dirt, compact it a little more making sure we have all decomposable grass out of the dirt area where the sh uh, uh, the concrete's gonna be laying. Plus we are spraying down all the dirt, making sure that dirt gets nice and wet and moist and compacted so that when we do start to hand mix everything and start laying that concrete down, we don't want the dirt sucking the water out of the concrete on us because then it's gonna dry 10 times quicker on us and hand mixing is gonna take longer. And we also are laying a little bit of rebar in here not a whole lot because personally I don't think that a 12 by 12 shed slab needs it. The reason why I don't think that the shed slab needs it is because it's not wedged in by anything and if the soil or earth was to move in any direction the shed slab would move independently and together as one. There's nothing that's going to be trying to separate it. Oh and then also just so you guys know this is Southern California and we don't need gravel. Uh, on the bottom or on top of our dirt or soil conditions because we don't have a frost line and I know a lot of you that are probably watching this are either watching this from the east coast or some northern states 
where uh, you guys do see winter, but um, we never see winter pretty much in Southern California. It's beach weather year round. The soil never expands, so we don't need to worry about putting a three quarter inch gravel or rock below our concrete. And if you, the only time that our soil could expand a lot is maybe during a flood or a heavy rain, and usually with a clay soil because clay really sucks up and soaks in a lot of water. So that's the only kind of clay, or I mean, that's the only type of soil we would really have to worry about around here in Southern California. But other, otherwise, like I was saying, guys, it's beach weather. We don't really have to worry about that type of stuff. But um, here we are just edging the sides, floating the top of the concrete, just bringing on all the concrete that we've been mixing, using the 6-foot Milwaukee to uh, screed with, plus our 12-inch or 12 inch, uh, board. So when we did start mixing and bringing all the concrete, as you guys were seeing, we were bringing all the concrete loads on the side edges of the slab itself so that when we did start to rod back the concrete we would have something a guide to go off of because our 12 foot board was a little bit actually I don't think it was 12 I think it was like 11 and a half so it was a little shy of being the full length that we kind of needed to rod with and you can see there was a little hole we miscalculated the concrete maybe by two or three bags bummer but I had to go on a Lowe's run and get more Blue Hawk and the problem with really hand mixing everything guys is that everything starts to dry unevenly and it's just a it's kind of like a constant chase you have to bowl float some areas funny float some areas and hand trail out hand trail some areas i mean it's not like a huge deal but um it's just a much easier when you can go along the whole process as one rather than uh how how kind of what we're doing right now Sam's still trailing the top and I'm both floating the bottom because one we actually ran out of concrete and two we just weren't mixing concrete quick enough trying to uh, pretty much keeping up with how fast this uh, shed slab was drying even though it wasn't drying that quick we were just it was it's just a lot of work to hand mix guys so I recommend always getting a concrete truck anything over a pallet you can see I started uh, to broom that top uh, upper top left corner area and uh, it's actually starting to get dark on us, guys. Um, I think we, like I was saying earlier, I think we this job took us about 12 hours in total to complete. From 7 a.m. to uh, like 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. So 13 hours in total. And we just started brooming a little more of this shed slab, the top, top half of it. Going along, we're or we're bowl float. We start with a bowl float, then we do an edge, then we hit it with a uh, funny float, then a steel funny float or steel uh, steel trowel float, and then we go down to our small hand hand tools. Getting the nice finish on top of it. So this definitely is possible for a homeowner as long as you have all the tools to do it. Um, I recommend just getting a professional to come in and do it for you because it's uh, not worth breaking your back over. But you can see how dark it got on us. It got dark pretty quick on us and I'm just trying to rush and get those form boards out before it gets too dark. And you can see I actually had to break out a light for us, my phone light, and show Sam uh, if we can broom this, the last little area where we ran out of concrete on. Overall, uh, the job came out really great even though uh, it took longer than expected to do but you can see here's the final product guys the project came out really nice it cured very evenly overall because it was in direct sunlight and there's the tough shed that the homeowners brought in I believe the value that you get from actually putting in these concrete shed slabs and then putting the tough sheds on top for your backyard is a huge value to your house because it's honestly kind of like a another room that you can use or storage or for whatever you really want to use it for but um anyways guys if you guys like the video please like share subscribe me and my dad really appreciate that and uh, don't forget to comment guys I love hearing from you guys and have a great one thank you